Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be doing a part two of the Mosquito MQTT series on this channel, where initially we discussed how to set up Mosquito MQTT on your Raspberry Pi, and then send messages to it from your local computer, all via Python, and it was very simple and easy to set up. Now we're simply going to do an extension of that in the future videos to come after that. We'll, con we'll continue building upon MQTT so we get a full stack application, an IoT application that we could do some real life practical uh, use cases with. So in today's video, we're going to add a Node.js layer on our local computer that we will be able to hit an endpoint and interact with the MQTT client running on our Raspberry Pi and what will happen in this client in today's video is it will expect a specific message, a payload, okay? So expect a payload, and if the payload is as expected as yes, it's going to run this capture function. Now this capture function is a function that essentially takes a photo from the Raspberry Pi camera that I have attached to my Raspberry Pi, and it's going to save it to an S3 bucket, okay? So the prerequisites for this video, if you're watching this at this point, is you have to watch part one, which I'll link, and you also have to watch the video where I talked about linking an S3 bucket to your Raspberry Pi. So the outcome of today's tutorial will be a Node.js endpoint will essentially be activated from our local computer, which will send a payload to our Raspberry Pi, which will tell it to capture a photo and save it to an S3 bucket. So that's what we'll be doing today end to end. And in the next video, we'll be doing another layer on top of that, probably a React layer where we can interact with it via the UI. So to get started here, if you watch part one, this is simply an extension of the code. Okay, so this is an extension of the code. So the only thing we're adding here now is we are adding, instead of simply printing a message, which we did in part one, we are going to say if message.payload equals yes, we are going to run the capture function. That is the only layer we're adding on top of this MQTT example from part one. And of course, some exception handling and else. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go into that capture function and see what's there. So that comes from this S3 example.py, which I discussed in the S3 video. And simply what we're doing is we're configuring some imports for S3 that we need. And we have this capture image function and this capture video function that captures the file path for the image and the file path for the video for my Raspberry Pi camera. So if you want, you can buy a Raspberry Pi camera. They're super cheap. I don't sell them at my store, but they're all over Amazon for eight bucks. And especially now because it's around Black Friday time, you could probably get them for cheap. And then once you have your camera set up, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run this capture function. We're going to configure some paths here. So the desktop path is just the path to my desktop on my Raspberry Pi. And we have the bucket name, which I talked about in that S3 video. And we have a timestamp. So I want a timestamp for each video and image I take. And I'm just going to create a path. I'm going to capture the image with the capture image function. And I'm just going to upload that to S3 with this upload to S3 function right here, where I pass in the key ID for my bucket and the secret access key. Or this is not for my bucket, for my user that is that has access to my S3 bucket. And I'm just going to pass some variables here, all discussed in the S3 video, pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to upload that. So as you can see, we're adding a layer of functionality here where we're actually approaching real life use cases of using MQTT, where we're expecting a certain message on the MQTT channel. And we are going to do some real life things. So we could take a photo in real life and upload it to an S3 bucket, which we can view later on as the user. So this is all the code. As you can see, we have this MQTT example and we have this S3 example. And of course we have MQTT Mosquito running on our back end of the Raspberry Pi. So now hopefully you got our understanding of the modification of the code from part one. Let's go back to the local computer, my Mac, to see the Node.js setup to activate the endpoints, and hopefully we can get this running and take a photo from our local computer using Node.js. So let's jump into that. Okay, so jumping back to the local computer side of things, before I get into the explanation of how to run this side, I just want to stress to you guys, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel because I believe there's a lot of content that can help you, whether you are a beginner or a more advanced IoT programmer or programmer in general. And even better, if you could donate to the channel down below in the Buy Me A Coffee link, that would be highly appreciated to continue supporting Shilla Tech content. So yes, we're back in our local computer and we have the project open. It's an incredibly simple Node.js project. As you could see here, it is just one file in our Node.js project 
where all the code is in our index.js file. And so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start this project from scratch if this is your first time using a node. So simply you wanna make sure you have NPM installed on your computer. So I, I think we can check the version like this. Sorry, I have NPM on my computer, so make sure you have NPM. And the first thing you want to do is you just want to create a folder. I'm just going to create it on my desktop here, and we're just going to call it Raspberry Pi YouTube Backend, okay? So we're just going to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the code here, and we're going to open a new window. Actually, let's not open a new window yet. We are going to just go into that folder. So let's go back. And we are on the terminal here in VS Code, as you could see. We're just going to go to Raspberry Pi. Okay. And then let's clear that. And we're just going to initialize a node project. So we're just going to run npm init slash y. The slash y flag just prevents them from asking all these questions that we don't care about for the sake of this video. So we're just going to initialize. And now we should have a package.json file in that folder. So that means we have an npm project initialized. So now we're just going to go back to Visual Studio Code and open this project. So let's just go open folder here, and we're just going to do this. We're going to open it. Okay, and we are just going to open a, or create a file, so a new file, index.js. So this is where the code will be. Okay, and we're just gonna copy the code that I had from the previous example. So this is the code, and we just have to npm install these three packages. So let's just open a terminal here. So as you can see, very simple setup. We just created a project index.js file, and we could just npm install express, mqtt, and body parser. Okay. Oh, sorry, how do you write install? All right. So as opposed to the first video, we're just doing JavaScript as opposed to Python, and we're actually using a backend endpoint, which will be hosted on our local host to send a useful message as opposed to just a random message. Okay, so we have that. So I'm just going to run this and then we'll walk through the code at a high level. So I'm just going to do node index.js. Okay, so you can see we're running the server on our local computer. So it's running now. Okay, so in this code what we have is we have these imports express is used to handle our backend. So it's a very popular package um, used for backend in Node. So just know that at a high level, if you have been using Node, you probably know what Express is. Body parser just allows us to address middleware to parse JSON appropriately. And we have MQTT. So this is the important package. So in the first video, I believe you use Paho, MQTT, and Python. This is essentially the same thing, but it's the, the Node version, the JavaScript version. So it's just an MQTT. Uh, SDK essentially on top of our node project. And we are just initializing the back end with Express, the specific ports. And we're just passing in the IP address like this with MQTT in front. So if you watch the first video, you should be able just to substitute the IP address we got from your Raspberry Pi. And this is the name of the MQTT channel that we defined in part one again. Once again, it should be the same on your Raspberry Pi and your Node.js side of things. And then we just create a client with this library. So we just connect and it looks like it ran successfully. And we just pass in some other middleware to our app, which we initialized with Express. And so this is the endpoint I've been talking about. So an endpoint is just an, a URL with an extension that we're going to hit. And it's going to do some action based on the code we define in there. So it's going to contain the message we want, which is yes. So if we have this message, that is the message that produces the photo on the Raspberry Pi side of things. And it is just going to publish to that MQTT channel. And hopefully the Raspberry Pi uh, MQTT clients will be able to funnel that to the Raspberry Pi code there, waiting for that. And eventually it should um, take a photo based on that message, right? As we saw on the Raspberry Pi side of things. And that's really it for this code. So we're going to hit this endpoint right now on our browser. And if everything's successful, which we should see in the browser, we will see a photo taken and sent to S3, which we will open. So let's just go to the browser. So I'm just gonna use Chrome. Let me just go ahead and open Chrome here. Go to my account. And we're just gonna go to localhost. And I already did this before, take photo, okay? So let me just aim it again at the plants like I did in the first video. Let's go ahead and do that. 
So let's just, and it's also going to take a video, by the way, so we could open both, um, take photo. So message published successfully. So it sent the message successfully to the MQTT channel. Okay. So quickly, let's jump into the Raspberry Pi side of things and look at the the console log or, or the the print statement that it should have received that message and taken a photo. Okay, so I jumped to the Raspberry Pi side of things. I realized we didn't run the code, so let's just go ahead and run that. Let's just go ahead and run it. And then I'm just going to hit the local endpoint again on my computer. So that's off screen here. So we're just gonna hit the same endpoint we hit and you should see it in this code here. So let's just go ahead and hit that endpoint. I just wanna show you in the log and just make sure this code is running here on your Raspberry Pi. So we're just gonna hit it. And we can see we received the message on the channel and we're going to upload to S3. So everything is good. It looks like everything is captured successfully. And let me just try again because my camera is pointed at the table. So I'll just do it one more time. Just gonna hit it again. And you can see we did it twice in a row very easily. And we're just going to open S3 to see the content that we just took. Okay, so let's just open AWS real quick to make sure the images are there and I did everything properly. So we're just in AWS S3. We just want to open the image we just took and it should be of my messy desk. So let's just open it. Okay. And there we go. So that's the image we just took. All executed from a Node.js backend connected to Raspberry Pi with MQTT. Once again, very powerful applications we can extend this to, and hopefully in the next video, we are going to even extend that further with a React front end on top of this application to essentially build a full stack application. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something new and if you enjoyed the content, please consider uh, subscribing to the channel, following it down below. Also leave any comments if you just enjoyed the video, and also let me know what you want to see in the comments section down below. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and take it easy, everyone. Thank you.